Mike Tyson was a beast in his boxing A days, and his deadly stare at the face-offs gave chills to people watching him on TV. His animal instincts were often seen in matches when he went berserk with his opponents. And as wild as it sounds, Mike actually bit his opponent's ear off, disqualifying himself from the match and incurring heavy penalties. Sounds surreal? Join us in today's video to find out how it all transpired and what happened following this bizarre event. Lead up to his first fight versus Evander Holyfield, November 1996 was not the first time the two boxers came face to face. They had known each other since their teenage days. I don't know. Um, how do you, how you explain it? You know, we've known each other for a long since we were kids. They had a sparring session and a showdown over a pool table, which Mike had no recollection of. Hollyfield always claimed that Mike never stood up to him the way he did against other fighters. He kept his own against Mike all the time. And a decade later, the two finally got an opportunity to settle their beef in the boxing ring. Mike Tyson was released from prison in March of 1995, and he was absolutely jacked. He was in the best shape of his life and could kill anyone with his menacing glare. Despite the odds, Hollyfield shockingly pulled off the impossible and stopped Tyson in the 11th round. The second fight against Hollyfield and the earbit incident. There was so much on the line for Tyson in the second fight. He was on his way to gaining back his popularity as the baddest man on the planet after his upset against Buster Douglas. He was decimating his opponents after his comeback, and Hollyfield took that away from him. Hollyfield was expected to be an easy fight as he was not completely healthy, but he stunned Mike no matter what. And the two met again at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on June 28, 1997. Tyson was under a lot of pressure as his entire career was on the line. Apparently, Tyson was becoming extremely frustrated by Holyfield's use of his head. He complained about Holyfield's headbutts in their first fight, but the ref ruled them incidental. And the same thing happened in the second round of their second bout, but referee Mills Lane ruled it incidental. In the third round, the two were going at it, as Holyfield complained that Tyson had bitten a chunk out of his right ear. The referee continued the fight after a brief stoppage. However, Tyson did it again and bit a chunk of Holyfield's left ear which ended up stopping the fight, and Hollyfield was declared the winner via disqualification. Consequences of the ear bite Tyson was not hiding anything after the event and told the media, Hollyfield kept butting me. He butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again in the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him, he had me holding, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for it, and he kept going for it, and he butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he charged into me. And no one warned him, no one gave, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. What am I supposed to do? I've got children to raise. He's not a warrior. He's got a little nick on his ear. He didn't want to fight me. Tyson was so frustrated by the headbutts, and said he was blacking out a little. Look at, me, look, at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I gotta go home and my kids are gonna be scared of me. Look at me, man. What are you gonna do now in terms of your career, Mike? What are you to as a direct consequence of the year, by his anger forced him to take such a step. As he said, I just want to kill him. Anybody watching could see the headbutts were so overt. I was furious, an undisciplined soldier, and I lost my composure. Then, chaos ensued. The crowd went crazy and threw everything they could on Tyson. He was hit by a water bottle as he was making his way back to the dressing room. Shots were fired in the grand lobby as many called it one of boxing's gloomiest nights. That was not just it. The Nevada State Athletic Commission fined Tyson $3 million and revoked his boxing license, which was reinstated a year later. I move that Michael Gerard Tyson's boxing license be revoked and further move that Michael Gerard Tyson pay administrative fine the amount of $3 million and that he also be assessed for all costs of these proceedings. However, Mike was never the same after the fight. It was a terminal blow to his career, and the downward trajectory of his career had started. He then went on to lose to Lennox Lewis in 2002, Danny Williams in 2004, and the final match against Kevin McBride in June 2005. Apologies. Well, after many years, Tyson realized that what he did was actually uncalled for and the bitterness between the two could not have been dragged on for long as both knew each other before they made a name for themselves in the professional boxing world. Later, he did issue an apology, which was not considered sincere. Tyson at that time was not apologetic for his actions, and it appeared as if he was forced to do it. And will never do again. I apologize to the world, to my family, and to the Nevada State Athletic Commission 
that has always treated me fairly. However, in 2009, when Mike Tyson was not the fiercest man on the planet, sitting together with Holyfield on The Oprah Winfrey Show, admitted that his actions that night were born largely out of frustration with Holyfield getting the better of him. I was just pissed off that he was such a great fighter. People who love me don't have to say Evander this guy that guy. This is a beautiful guy. We watched each other grow and become established esteemed fighters. And I just want you to know that it's a pleasure passing through life being acquainted with you. He said the same to Larry King when he was questioned about what was going through his mind when he bit his ear. As Tyson was mature and no longer his younger self, he said very apologetically that he was sorry for his actions. Did you say in the ring that you were sorry? No, I didn't. Were you sorry? Well, not that, not at that moment. I wasn't sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sorry then, no. The relationship between the two today, Tyson and Holyfield, have a very good relationship today. Tyson invited Holyfield on his podcast, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. They joked about the incident, laughed, and talked about all the battles they went through. In 2013, they filmed a Foot Locker commercial, poking fun at the biting incident. And in 2014, Holyfield introduced Tyson to the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. The two have reached a point in their lives where they can put their egos aside and talk about all the good times. They have nothing but respect for each other as they both have been the best at what they did at some point in their lives. During the launch of their product Holy Ears, Holyfield said Mike and I have a long history of competition and respect for one another. And that night changed both of our lives. Back then, we didn't realize that even as power athletes, we were also in a lot of pain. In the boxing business, when one's life is on the line and the other guy across the ring is willing to hurt you to save himself, these things often happen. The great part about it is that these things get reconciled and the two enjoy a healthy relationship without blaming the other. Mike Tyson has had an incredible life with many ups and downs. It feels great that he has let bygones be bygones grown and matured into a person who can accept his mistakes.